Hello, I'm Fiona Kinnebrow from the Technical University of Munich. In this video, I'll briefly introduce a paper I co-authored with Henrik Selin, Noel Selin, and Miranda Schroers, recently released in Regulation and Governance, entitled When Private Governance Impedes Multilateralism, the Case of International Pesticide Governance. Private governance, by which we mean the enactment of state-like governance functions by non-state actors, has been growing rapidly in recent decades, in particular in the form of private standards. These are particularly important now in the realm of sustainability governance, where various actors, from NGOs to government officials, are promoting the expansion of private standards to fulfill sustainability goals. The driving assumption behind the promotion of such standards is that their expansion is complementary to public policies for sustainability. A little research has actually been done in this area, especially at the international level. We focus on the case of international pesticide governance, a topic currently growing in importance as scientific evidence increases on the harmful effects of synthetic pesticides on human health and the environment. We examine how private agricultural standard setting bodies and parties involved in international treaty-based pesticide governance interact and what the effects of these interactions are on pesticide governance. Theoretically, we connect this to previous research on interactions between public and private actors, which describe complementary interactions as those that occur when public and private actors work towards a common outcome, competitive interactions as involving antagonism among public and private actors competing in a limited governance space, and coexistent interactions occupying a middle ground between complementary and competitive types. Through our case, we add a fourth type to these categories, a confounding interaction. In international pesticide governance, we look at three main global treaties that cover hazardous pesticides. The Montreal Protocol on Substances that Deplete the Ozone Layer, the Rotterdam Convention on the Prior Informed Consent Procedure for Certain Hazardous Chemicals and Pesticides in International Trade, and the Stockholm Convention on Persistent Organic Pollutants. On the private governance side, we look at 11 major sustainability standards which have specific requirements for pesticide use. All three global treaties include their own individual list of pesticides that are subject to specific requirements, and each treaty has a separate mechanism that allows these lists to be expanded over time. The Stockholm Convention and Montreal Protocol ban the production, use, and trade of listed chemicals. But the Rotterdam Convention functions differently. It does not ban listed chemicals, but instead sets up a prior and informed consent procedure through which importing parties must give their consent before the trade of listed chemicals can occur. In the case of the Rotterdam Convention, pesticides can be added to the prior and informed consent or pick list due to a variety of underlying circumstances. This can be based on combinations of bans or severe restrictions in two countries from different regions or on problems of use in a single developing country which may have weaker capacities to regulate chemicals. So how do these public-private governance mechanisms interact? We find that private agricultural standard setting bodies are adopting the list of pesticides from each of the three different conventions as a basis for their own ban lists. In the case of the Stockholm Convention and Montreal Protocol, the uptake of their chemical lists aligns with the goals and mechanisms of the treaties. Both are bans. However, in the case of the Rotterdam Convention, pesticides can be added to the list due to a variety of underlying circumstances. The use of the Rotterdam Convention pick list as a ban list means though that any new listing on the pick list leads to a ban for all producers complying with 10 of these 11 major private agricultural standards worldwide. Now we turn to the effects of the interaction. The adoption of the three treaties chemicals lists by private agricultural standards is in some ways contributing to the goals of the chemicals treaties by extending the implementation of the bans of harmful pesticides, including in countries which may not be parties to the treaties themselves. However, we also observe certain unintended consequences of the standards adoption of the Rotterdam Convention pick list. In order for a chemical to be added to the list, it must be approved by consensus by the conference of the parties. However, since 2008, six chemicals have been approved for addition to the list by the convention scientific body, the chemical review committee, but have, met, have then been blocked by the conference of the parties in this final stage of approval. Of these pesticides, two have eventually been approved in later meetings, but four are still pending approval, and it's likely that the number of pesticides nominated for addition to the pick list will grow rapidly in the coming years. And unlike pesticides initially added to the list, these nominated pesticides are in widespread use. We argue that this private agricultural standards adoption of the pick list has multiple effects. First, it provokes changes in Rotterdam Convention parties 
interest with respect to listing new chemicals on the pick list. Although there may be several reasons why a country chooses to block an addition, private standards adoption of the pick list as a ban list is transforming the pick list into a de facto ban mechanism. This partially invalidates the argument that a pick listing does not equal a ban, complicating the debate among parties and other stakeholders around the effects of adding a chemical to this list. As a result, this makes it harder to add chemicals to the pick list. Private standards ban of listed chemicals lends more weight to arguments related to negative trade and economic impacts made by actors seeking to block listings. It also increases incentives for both pesticide producing countries and pesticide consuming countries to propose a listing. Overall, we argue that by negatively impacting the ability of the parties to the Rotterdam Convention to reach consensus on adding more pesticides to the pick list, this interaction potentially reduces the Rotterdam Convention's effectiveness over time. So how does this relate to our initial interest in understanding public-private governance interactions? In terms of theorizing these interactions, we find that our case does not fit neatly into previously theorized interaction types. Adding to three types of interactions previously identified in the literature, we use the term confounding to describe a new fourth type of interaction in which indirect interaction between public and private actors with broadly aligned goals result in unexpected counteracting feedback effects. As demonstrated by our analysis, a confounding interaction occurs when public and private governors share overarching objectives, but private actors seeking to gain legitimacy by adopting certain components of public governance inadvertently affect public regulatory decision-making processes. This provokes consequences that are contrary to their own goals. Second, in terms of understanding important dynamics in the Rotterdam Convention negotiations, we show that negotiation blockages may result from parties changing interests relative to the expansion of private agricultural standards and these standards adoption of the pick list as an automatic ban. Third, in terms of understanding private standard setting processes, we show how contrary to the idea that private standards are only technical or transcendent of politics, private standards own legitimating strategies are often intertwined with state-based decision-making. I'd like to wrap up with three key takeaways. First, our case highlights the need for scholars and policymakers alike to pay closer attention to the ways in which interactions between public and private governance may lead to unintended consequences and to take potential interactions into account when encouraging the development of private standards. Second, we've shown how attempts by private actors to impose stricter governance than state actors can actually undermine the potential for multilateral governance to become more stringent. Third, it's likely that similar dynamics of confounding interactions whereby private actors aiming for more stringent action unintentionally impact public decision-making processes could also exist in other sustainability areas beyond pesticide governance. And we urge scholars to pursue further research on such interactions. The link to the article is in the video description below. Thank you to the funders of this research, the Tom Institute for Advanced Study, and many thanks to you for your attention today.